So in part five of this series, we're gonna go over the recovery phase or the kicking recovery phase. Mickey, I'm gonna get you to lie on your side towards me, please. You okay there? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get on the glutes here first. And we're gonna get on the glute maximus and medius. So I'm more towards the max right now. You okay? Yep. Just great. That's under. And I'm gonna change my vector up towards the medius. Bring it up there. Okay. So essentially what we're talking about here is the recovery phase of the flutter kick. Good. The recovery phase or the upbeat of the flutter kick involves lifting the leg, there we go, back and uh, after the propulsive phase of the downward kick. Good. So in terms of the glute max and glute med, essentially these muscles uh, facil facilitated by their contraction actually assist in this recovery. You okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's just take it into, there we go. You okay? A little bit of circumduction. Okay, so glute med doesn't feel like it's it's restricted, but not as bad as we start getting towards glute max. Yeah, that's a lot more. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so again, I'm only doing one side of the body. I would always do Work on both sides. Now, let's have you lie on your back, please. So you may notice as we're going through these structures, I may go over the same structure, but it's on a different phase for a different purpose. So we're gonna get on the hamstrings. You okay? Yeah. Just work our way on the hamstrings. Again, not making a fist, having my hand flat. And I'm gonna start going into a little bit of circumduction almost right away so I can delineate between the different hamstrings between the semitendinosus, membranosus, some membranosus in the center here, and the biceps femoris, long and short head. So if we're talking about the hamstring group in relationship to the kicking recovery phase, well, first we talked about the recovery phase or the upbeat begins with the extension, primarily glute max, glute medius, but it's rapidly followed by knee flexion. And the knee flexion bringing the lower leg towards the buttocks is where the hamstrings come into play. You okay there? Yeah. Good. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of restriction. <laughs> So more towards the semi-membranosis there. Okay, take it out, good. Okay, I'm gonna get you to go face down here, please. So in terms of the kicking and recovery phase, the next thing you do is get onto the gastrocnemius and soleus. So like with all actions of the gastrocnemius and soleus, they have a primary role in maintaining a plantar flexed foot position throughout the entire kick cycle. During the recovery phase, these muscles contribute to the effectiveness of the uh, flutter kick, substantially contribute to it. You okay? Yep. So while we're here, there's one other thing I wanna mention. Um, Mickey, come on up. Here, actually, actually two things, is that wherever we're doing in the gastrocnemius and soleus, we wanna make sure we get the deep muscles, the deep flexors, the flexor halicus longus, tibialis posterior, and the flexor digitorum longus at the same time. And so getting in fairly deep. And you have to get in this position to actually go through the gastrocnemius and soleus. Are you okay there? Yes. Good. Okay, so. What I want you to do is actually lie on your back for a second here. Now, which I haven't done, but it's equally as important, is every time we get onto a particular structure, 
we have to consider the antagonists. So we'd actually look at the shins at the same time if they were really tight. So I might want to get onto the tibialis anterior here. Doing okay there? Oh yeah. Because we have a restriction in the antagonist muscle, it is also going to affect that primary structure. In this case, tibialis anterior, also moving up a little bit more towards the peroneals there. You okay? Yeah, good. So that concludes part five of this series. Take a look at the other videos. This will make a huge difference in terms of improving performance, but also preventing injuries. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop me a note. And also note that for each one of these particular videos, I have also produced a blog. So you can actually get in there, you can look at the science behind what we're actually talking about, and I think that you'll find it really interesting. So until next time.